I am joined by Linda Golrahani, Vice President of Revenue Strategy and Distribution for Marcus Hotels and Resorts, coming to us from beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How have you been uh, through this mess? <laughs> <laughs> Good. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I think uh, none of us can even believe what the last year uh, was like. You know, we had done some contingency planning prior to it, but uh, could have never, uh, never, ever planned for what we've gone through. So, um, but but considering, uh, you know, we've survived and, you know, hopefully are, are here to see us come out of it. Wisconsin getting back to normal? Eh, some parts of it. <laughs> slowly but surely um, Milwaukee you know, we're certainly no uh Texas or Florida but uh <laughs> you know baby steps hmm what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> uh well quickly tell us about uh Marcus what's that look like so uh from a, a company perspective, you know, we're a management company, half owned, half managed, a mix of independent and branded hotels. Um, you know, through COVID, you know, early on, we closed all of our hotels um, it, for a, at least three months and then slowly started to reopen them based on the demand that we saw in each market for those hotels. So, um, you know, wasn't really a one size fits all approach, but, um, you know, we are all fully reopened at this point and uh, seeing some pretty good demand. What about yourself? Um, what kind of adjustments did you have to make in your role? Well, I mean, at the beginning, it was really tough because there was no revenue to manage, right? So, um, you know, it was... Uh, we had to react really quickly, right? And so, you know, we had daily meetings with our senior leadership team where we decided what hotels we were closing, what staff we were laying off. And, um, you know, it was really kind of speed to market at that point, right? You know, we had to make really quick decisions. Um, but it, it, it was hard personally because I, I wasn't doing my job. I mean, there was no revenue to manage. Um, and I was trying to protect my team in the field because even though there wasn't a lot of revenue to manage, you still have to keep the lights on and, and you can't do that with no people. Um, so it was, you know, there were some really interesting conversations early on. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, overall, I, I you know, I, me and my team are, are solid. Uh, you know, I laid off some and have lost some kind of secondary positions, but my core revenue management team in the field um, is is as strong as we ever were and, you know, really have the same team that we had prior to the pandemic. Back to those daily meetings, um, I guess the collaboration shot up between interdepartmental collaboration. Tell us about that. Absolutely. I mean, it was a, you know, really group collaborative decisions on everything that we were doing, um, including how we were analyzing what, what to open and close, what staff we were letting go. I mean, everything we did as a senior leadership team together. And I think it, it made a huge different, difference for us organizationally because looking back, we were really quick to make decisions. We feel really good about the decisions we made, that they were the right ones. Not, not all of them, right? But, but big, big picture, we, made, we, we did the right thing. And, you know, I think our company came out of it in a pretty strong position. Did, did your role change? Were you taking on, as travel started to come back in your geographies, you know, were you taking on more? What did that look like? Not so much. I mean, we were very lucky that our corporate team stayed very much intact and we were allowed to remain at a corporate level, you know, so I never had to do revenue management for any of our hotels. You know, I definitely had to step in with a little bit more minutia than I had in the past, but I still had my core revenue management team in the field. Um, you know, there was a span of time where we cut their hours um, for a couple of months, but by and large, my team was whole throughout the pandemic, um, which, you know, allowed me to, to really look at big picture and to think strategically about what we were going to do coming out of the pandemic. 
how about pricing your hotel? How challenging has that been? Or was it not challenging? Well, it's been interesting because every market has been so different. So, you know, we have a resort property um, located in between Chicago and Milwaukee that has not skipped a beat, to be honest. Um, you know, our mix of business has changed pretty dramatically where we've, you know, gone pretty much all leisure transient, where before we had a, a pretty significant mix of group. Um, but, you know, the pricing at that hotel, actually, we run higher rates than we had in the past, um, just because the demand was there and they were in kind of a niche market that didn't have a ton of restrictions. Um, and then we had other markets that were in heavily restricted cities or states um, that were, were not successful and that we had to be more aggressive with our pricing. You know, I think the biggest challenge for, for and it's not just our hotels, it's every hotel right now, but is the travelers different? You know, it's, you don't have your weekday business traveler with one person per room. So, you know, you've got more people in your rooms during the week. You've got more people staying on property using your facilities. Um, and it's a different clientele than we're used to. And so we've had to adapt to that. And, um, you know, some of the clientele is not always great. Um, and, you know, I think there's a perception that, that some of that business comes through certain channels and, you know, maybe we shouldn't take business from certain channels, but I truly believe that's not the case. It's just, it's a different traveler today than it was in, in 2019. What about forecasting? <laughs> what has, uh, yeah. <laughs> what does that look like recently? And then what do you anticipate in the next few months? I mean, it's, it's a guess, right? Um, <laughs> you know, we, we do our best. Uh, you know, we've, tried to focus really only on the next 30 or 60 days, but that's becoming more challenging to not try to look out to the future. Um, you know, as we start to staff up, you know, we, we have to make sure that with, with business being so bad and cash being important, we have to make sure that we're staffing appropriately. And so we, we can't just staff for the next couple of weeks. We have to think about the long-term implications of that. So there has been a lot more focus on forecasting. Um, you know, and historically, when you have hotels with a lot of group base, it makes it much easier to forecast <laughs> because you have that, that piece that's on the books, right? right. Um, so it, it's, it's a guess, an educated guess. I mean, we look a lot at, you know, the last couple of weeks pickup to see how that's growing week over week. Um, and again, it's very market specific. Um, but it's tough, you know, we use travel clicks demand 360 data to see, you know, what the comp set looks like, um, you know, to see if we're trending, you know, kind of the way they are and have kind of mixed up our comp sets on those reports to see if there's anything that we can learn from kind of non-traditional comp sets. Mm -hmm. Any, any indication, uh, any activity from groups? Uh, definitely some. So, you know, for really throughout the pandemic, we saw some group demand from social, you know, wedding type events, again, depending on the market, we had a couple of markets that were much less restrictive than others that were very successful. Uh, sports teams. So we have a number of hotels in college towns. So you know that that business continued to travel youth sports has been a big market for us as well as youth dance groups. Um, and again, some of that is market specific, um, but we've had a lot of success in those markets. In the last maybe four to six weeks, we've definitely seen more traditional kind of corporate group leads start to come in. And, um, you know, a mix between some small and big groups, but just some that have, you know, some pent up demand where they haven't met in a long time and, and historically they do. So definitely things are feeling better on the group side. You know, I still don't think we'll get back to 2019 levels until probably 2023, but definitely some momentum. All right. Well, Linda, thank you for spending some time with me today. It's my pleasure. You bet. <laughs>